In early 2020, Calumet Heritage Partnership released the first of what will be an annual list of historic places in the Calumet region that are in jeopardy. These significant places included on the Calumet Heritage Area Most Endangered list face numerous, often complex problems, including plans for demolition, neglect, obsolete use, structural stability, and owners who don't have the money to make the repairs or are uncooperative with efforts for preservation. The goal of the list is to bolster advocacy efforts to find solutions and save imperiled landmarks. In addition to the main inventory of places, the annual list includes a themed category of landmarks that face special challenges. In 2020, we chose to highlight sacred spaces. Illinois. Jackson Park, South Shore Cultural Center, and the Midway Plaisance. Significant features of these places and structures include Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vaux designed landscapes and golf course, the South Shore Nature Sanctuary, Jackson Park Woman's Garden, the Iowa Building, The Daniel Burnham Designed Comfort Station. Jackson Park, Midway Plaisance, and the South Shore Cultural Center are among the greatest historic and natural assets of Chicago's South Side. Spanning from 56th Street to 71st Street along the lakefront and west along Midway Plaisance, they connect to Washington Park, Another remarkable Chicago treasure, also designed by Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vaux, with contributions by Alfred Caldwell. The sites are listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and certain features, structures, and buildings of both park sites are designated Chicago landmarks. These include the Museum of Science and Industry Building, constructed as the Palace of Fine Arts in 1893, along with the Columbia Darrow Bridge and the landscape features of the park surrounding the museum building and bridge. The South Shore Cultural Center Building, the Club Building, the Gatehouse, Stable, Pergola, and several outdoor terraces are also Chicago landmarks. Threats to these places include proposals currently under consideration for the construction of the Obama Presidential Center and a Tiger Woods-designed golf course at Jackson Park and the South Shore Cultural Center. The construction of the Presidential Center and golf course would adversely and permanently alter these historically significant landscapes. The proposed Presidential Center is still undergoing a federal review to assess its impact on the neighborhood, its residents, and its cultural resources. South Chicago Masonic Temple, 2939 East 91st Street, Chicago. With the dissolution of many local chapters of fraternal organizations who built similar buildings in the early part of the 20th century, this building is one of many around the country that face the possibility of being lost forever. Much like the recent demolition of the Southside Masonic Temple in the nearby Inglewood neighborhood. More research is needed to learn the early history of this building, but the 1912 proceedings of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of the ancient Free and Accepted Masons annual meeting held in Chicago note the building was the meeting location for lodges number 731 and number 767 Triluminar. The temple has now stood vacant for more than a decade and is currently for sale. Even though it was an important institutional building in the South Chicago community, there are currently no plans to reuse the facility. The former Masonic Temple is not well secured or protected from the elements, leaving it vulnerable to vandalism and further deterioration. Loretto Academy, Institute of the Blessed Virgin, 1447 East 65th Street, Chicago. 
The Academy was established in 1905 by the Sisters of Loretto, a Roman Catholic religious community of uncloistered women dedicated to both faith and education. By the mid-1950s, the school was noted for embracing the inclusion of an unlimited number of African-American women into its student body. This practice separated the school from others in the vicinity, especially when Woodlawn experienced large racial changes from the 1950s through the early 1970s. The school was later merged with other institutions as population in the community declined and continued to shift from multicultural, white ethnic, and mixed race to predominantly African American. After decades of disinvestment in the area, the building was sold to the Woodlawn Community Development Corporation and was repurposed as a social service center and a church. The building sold at auction in late 2019 and the new owner has still not signaled their intent. The building has experienced significant deterioration by neglect for more than three decades. Indiana. Gary Water Tower, 6th and Madison, Gary. This 133-foot-tall water tower was among Gary's oldest landmarks and is the first structure from our list to fall victim to a wrecking crew. Shortly after the city's founding by U.S. Steel in 1906, the Gary Heat, Light, and Water Company constructed the utility infrastructure necessary for tens of thousands of new residents and businesses. The company hired civil engineer John W. Alford of Chicago. He drew on his experiences observing waterworks around the world and supplying water for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition to capture the fresh water of Lake Michigan nearly three miles away. The Gary Water Tower was part engineering innovation and part architectural wonder when it was completed in 1909. The tower's tank measured 30 feet in diameter and sat on eight 90-foot steel columns. Rather than settling for an exposed steel skeleton, the Gary Heat, Light, and Water Company added a concrete block shell that transformed the utilitarian tower into an octagonal landmark, complete with decorative cornice and parapet wall. The tower quickly became a city icon, a point of pride, and a symbol of civic identity. Its destruction is a dramatic loss for the city's skyline. Sadly, Indiana American Water followed through with its plans and began demolition in March, claiming the tower was obsolete since it was no longer used as part of the site's emergency backup system. The company's estimate for the demolition of the water tower was $900,000, while its rehabilitation would have cost $1 million. News of the commencing demolition came as a surprise after Gary officials initially indicated support for preserving the landmark. Later, city officials admitted that the demolition permit had been granted in error. Theodore Roosevelt High School, 730 West 25th, Gary. Roosevelt is known for many things, including its role in the development of Superintendent William A. Wirtz's nationally recognized platoon system and designed by renowned school architect William Butts Itner. Most importantly, Roosevelt was the 20th century epicenter of civic pride for African-American citizens in Gary and one of only three high schools purpose-built to serve African-American students in Indiana. The Gary School Board built Roosevelt in response to a 1927 attempt to integrate Emerson High School that led to public backlash and a white student protest. While its origins stem from the practice of separate but equal, Roosevelt became a source of pride and academic excellence. The school also saw success outside of the classroom, winning the city football championships in 1947 and 1948, while the basketball team dominated the National Negro Basketball Championships in the 1930s, winning five. In February 2018, multiple failures of the heating system and burst water pipes forced current tenant Theodore Roosevelt College and Career Academy to relocate. The structure already faced a variety of issues from deferred maintenance due in part to its owner, the Gary Community School Corporation, 
lacking the funds to conduct basic operations. Facing an estimated $8.6 to $10 million for repairs and cleanup, the school corporation permanently shuttered the Roosevelt Building. District officials say they hope to seek nonprofit, community, or public private partnerships to preserve the National Register listed building, but the challenges are more than daunting. Gary Roosevelt High School is one of the state's greatest landmarks of African American history. Its loss would be immeasurable. Michigan Central Railroad Depot, 100 Washington Street, Michigan City. This circa 1910 Prairie School Depot is joined by the 11th Street South Shore Station as Michigan City's only remaining historic train stations. The facade of the long vacant 11th Street Station will be preserved and incorporated into a new station along the South Shore Line, but the Michigan Central is on the chopping block. The station is in remarkably great condition, currently housing a restaurant, but the property owner has different plans. In the summer of 2019, the owner of the waterfront property announced their intent to construct a multi-story condominium building where the depot currently stands. The owner has offered the building to anyone willing to pay for its relocation, otherwise it will be demolished. A new location will need to be identified and cost estimates to move it start at $250,000. Concerned citizens assembled in late 2019 to explore options for the depot's preservation, but the large price tag and COVID pandemic have put any progress on hold. Calumet Trust and Savings Bank, 900 East Chicago Avenue, East Chicago. The Calumet Trust and Savings Bank was established in 1909 to serve industrial workers. This neoclassical building, also known as the Riley Insurance Building, was constructed in 1916. The backer of its construction, Charles W. Hotchkiss, was involved in the development of the railroad in Northwest Indiana. Though a connection has not been confirmed through research, the Calumet Trust and Savings Bank has a fraternal twin along 119th Street in Whiting. The two banks share striking similarities with their grand columned entrances, but unfortunately, the Calumet Trust Building is in jeopardy. Following its use as a bank, the building was occupied by various city and federal government services before being left vacant. The neoclassical building is one of the last early 20th century commercial buildings located in what was historically a bustling Chicago Avenue corridor. The building is owned by the City of East Chicago and now has been vacant for more than two decades. It continues to deteriorate due to damage from a fire, the lack of a secure roof, and crumbling exterior masonry. Extensive repairs are desperately needed while the city searches for a new owner who can breathe new life into the once grand bank. Sacred Spaces Across America, religious buildings are among the most historic, architecturally distinguished, and lavishly ornamented structures in a community. But as congregations shrink and maintenance suffers, it's only a matter of time until landmarks like these are in jeopardy. Sacred spaces in the Calumet region are no different. Congregations of nearly every faith face declining attendance, constrained resources, and the burdens of aging, under-maintained, and overscaled edifices. Filled with memories and once objects of civic pride, these historic structures now pose a serious challenge to many denominations, congregations, and neighborhoods. If faith communities abandon or are forced to vacate their buildings, the challenge is magnified to then find a sustainable reuse. Often anchors of neighborhoods across the region, sacred spaces face an uncertain future and are in immediate need of our attention. Gary First AME, 2045 Massachusetts Street, Gary. The design of First AME's original sanctuary is credited to William Wilson Cook, a trailblazing African-American architect who got his start designing buildings for African-American schools and colleges in the South before coming to Gary in 1921. 
Cook led a successful practice in the city until the Great Depression, when he went to work as one of the first African-American employees of the U.S. Treasury Department, designing federal courthouses and post offices. In 2007, the congregation constructed a new sanctuary on an adjacent lot, leaving the original sanctuary, one of only a few remaining buildings in Gary designed by Cook, vacant. A church community comprised of congregants is now calling for a professional assessment of the building to see what it will take to stabilize the shifting tower and secure the roof, but repairs will not be cheap. Sacred Heart Catholic Church, 1731 Laporte Avenue, Whiting. In the face of dwindling attendance numbers and region-wide consolidation, the current parish has received multiple notices for closure from the Roman Catholic Diocese of Gary. Complete closure was last averted in 2018, but the future remains uncertain for the complex that includes a soaring 1926 Renaissance Revival Church, a three-story school that served as the original church, a convent, and a rectory. St. Michael the Archangel Church 83rd and South Shore Drive, Chicago. St. Michael the Archangel is one of the many churches threatened with closure by the Archdiocese of Chicago. Architect William J. Brinkman designed the magnificent Gothic Revival Church with its Polish congregants leading its construction between 1907 and 1909. The interior flourishes are equally as grand as the facade. The main altar reredos is constructed of butternut and bird's eye maple wood, as are the two side altars, the statues sculpted and painted by hand, and the beautiful communion rail is carved in oak with a white marble top. The interior of the church can seat 1,000 people. The church also contains the grand piano which belonged to famed composer Ignis Jan Paderewski. The magnificent stained glass windows were made by F.X. Zettler of Munich, Germany, and are arguably among the most beautiful examples of stained glass in the Archdiocese of Chicago. The Archdiocese has been alarmingly quiet on the building's future through the year. Reformation Evangelical Lutheran Church, 11310 South Forest Avenue, Chicago. In 1887, George Pullman, founder of the Pullman Palace Car Company in the adjacent Pullman neighborhood, donated two lots for the construction of the Elam Lutheran Church to serve the spiritual needs of his Swedish workers. The church was designed by architect Solon S. Beeman, who also designed the company town of Pullman. The first service was held there in December of 1888. Prior to his election to the U.S. Senate and eventually president, Barack Obama maintained a small workspace in this church during his community organizing days in the Roseland and Pullman communities. Since then, the congregants of what is now Reformation Evangelical Lutheran Church have been forced to move their worship services to a different location due to a lack of roof integrity and many other structural issues. The church is currently vacant and at risk of further deterioration and potential collapse. These places, among so many other endangered structures and spaces in the Calumet region, tell the story of how this land was settled and developed and how our ancestors transformed the region from wilderness into one of the most heavily industrialized areas in the country. They also tell the stories and hold the memories of the people who moved here, were born here, made their homes and raised their families here. For those reasons and more, it's important to preserve as many of these structures as we can so future generations can learn from this history, build upon its successes, and learn from its mistakes.